Hey, hey, welcome to Cooking with Coach Coates. I'm your host, Coach Coates, a.k.a. Daniel Coates, and here we go. I want you to go ahead and take a look as we're getting there to our slide presentation here. Let me begin by talking about the young me. Here I am, 20 years old, in the best shape of my life. Potential Olympic hopeful, Cal State Fullerton team captain, highest GPA, honor scholar. Then comes the next me. A few years later, 42 years old, still in decent shape, but around 300 pounds, and because of the choices that I was making in my food, began to get unhealthy. And then there's the unhealthy me. Only a year ago today, this is what I looked like. I was 425 pounds, I had trouble moving and everything else. But here we go now. This is me now, the healthy 57 year old. I've lost approximately 180 pounds. And in that passion, I've learned to cook and eat clean for myself to help myself to make the lifestyle changes necessary to live a great and normal life well, well into my 80s, 90s, and I think 100s. Here we go, let's take this journey. Coach, I'm the host of this video blog that chronicles a most exciting part of my personal journey. Through the lens of this endeavor, we will cook and eat clean, appetizing, delicious, colorful meals that highlight the reclamation of my health and happiness. At 57 years young, I am healthier than I was 30 years ago. Anyone who knows me will tell you that I live and love to teach, mentor, and coach individuals to compete. I decided to focus that same passion and energy on me by making personal and permanent lifestyle changes that illuminated my path to living in peace, balance, and health. I've lost over 170 pounds in a little over 10 months, and I have better mental clarity and energy than ever. Most important, I get the best of sleep of my adult life. And only 10 months ago, I had sleep apnea and was always tired. Food choices extend and save lives. The type and quality of food you purchase, prepare, and consume have a direct impact on the way you feel and overall health. A wise man once said, life is like a marathon, not a 100-meter dash. Now, I'm not a track guy, but I know enough about marathon and performance, understanding the basics of race strategy. Decisions made at each juncture of the 26.2-mile race have a huge impact on the outcome. I know and feel my life's marathon is barely half over. I've accidentally or on purpose discovered a way to nutritionally repair my body, and I'm healing for clarity and longevity daily through meditation, proper nutrition, and appropriate exercise. This was not always the case. Only one year ago, I found myself in the most unhealthy place in mind and body. Truly, my life light was dim at best and beginning to flicker. I had allowed myself to gain more than 200 pounds, of course, over a period of time, but yes, 200 pounds since graduating college. A year ago, I had just gone to the doctor voluntarily, I might add, but it gets scary when you have chest pains from walking from your office to the parking lot about 400 yards away. I was seen in the ER immediately, and they completed a battery of tests and came up with the following conclusions. At that time, I had high blood pressure, diabetes, sleep apnea, and numerous symptoms of congestive heart failure. I saw my primary care physician next. He explained to me, as he looked at me like most do, and shook his head and said, I now have the option to apply for disability because I was morbidly obese, and my weight gain was having a detrimental impact on the quality of my life. I just ignored the doctors and their recommendations and did my body no favors by eating everything I thought or could convince myself was nutritious. I was also taking doctor-prescribed medications, high blood pressure medications, diuretics, a pill for diabetes, and three painkillers a day to keep the pain at bay from the numerous athletic injuries and subsequent weight gain that resulted in chronic and severe arthritis in my knees, shoulders, hips, and back. There was not a time when I was not in pain. The medicine just took the edge off. Then, my world was turned upside down when I was involved in a serious car accident in 2019. 
I was poked and prodded and diagnosed with three herniated discs. I was in severe pain and could not walk to my car, let alone work for over three weeks. I was seen by an orthopedic surgeon who recommended immediate surgery. As a child of a career military man, I was trained to listen to the doctors, but in my mind, I knew that there was another way. I decided to contact a chiropractor I knew who had invited me to his wellness center numerous times as I was blessed with the opportunity to coach both of his sons in my capacity as a high school football and wrestling coach. Dr. Kenneth Cooper, president of Cooperstown Wellness Center, changed my life. First, I got relief from the almost unbearable pain I felt since the accident from the three herniated discs. The best part of that is I stopped taking pain medication altogether once we began to work. Dr. Cooper also introduced me to a book called The Longevity Diet by Walter Longo. It was at this point I realized that I did not have to be put out to the pasture. I could detox, cleanse, and heal my body from the inside out through fasting, clean eating, and meditation. I began my detox immediately. Next, I completed three five-day water-only fasts, approximately one month apart, to bring my mind, body, and spirit back into balance and alignment. Finally, the strangest part of this experience was that I lost my taste for meat. Dr. Cooper prepared me for the distinct possibility that my taste buds could change quite dramatically after detox. One week after beginning, I voluntarily eliminated meat from my diet because I no longer craved it. It is difficult to explain, but I feel in tune with my body now as far as what I should or should not eat. I personally eat as clean as possible and by no means anything chemical or byproducts. I genuinely enjoy the diversity of tastes and colors in the wide variety of vegetables I consume. I enjoy the artistry of cooking with the utilization of colors and combinations of tastes to make the perfect nutritious meals. It's now been 10 months and I've lost over 170 pounds. I have destroyed my initial goals losing 120 pounds and as of this week have set a new goal to lose a total of 200 pounds by October the 9th. To reach this goal, I must weigh 225 pounds, and it will be approximately one year since I started. How will I do that? Easy, staying hydrated, eating timely and clean, exercising regularly, and meditating. I have been taking vitamins and nutrients prescribed by my chiropractor and nutritionist. But the most amazing result of this journey is my newfound passion for cooking colorful, delicious, nutritious meals. Cooking and eating was healthy with Coach Coates. Here we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Thank you very much. Next, we will move on to what we worked on last week. We had our shrimp salad with Brussels sprouts. And I'm actually going to bring back Brussels sprouts because, I had, because we had so much, so many people that wanted to know about that. You know, I have to kind of go off here a little bit off script because I want to tell you how ironic it is to watch that video and to understand, you know, what I went through to get to this point and really to get you to understand that lifestyle changes are very, very possible. It just takes a little bit every day. Just try to improve a little bit every day. If I had one thing to say, that's the way I would, I would bring it, Okay. As you see here, we have a lot of variations. What makes our dishes healthy? Well, as you see in here, we have our purple kale, all right? And we have the beautiful salmon there that we're gonna prepare. And also, with our purple kale, our super greens and purple sweet potato fries. These have got to be my favorite is purple sweet potato fries. You know, a lot of people like French fries, but I tell you, the problem with French fries is the oil. And you know, that oil has been in that vat forever. With this oil here, you just put it in there. Okay, these purple sweet potatoes are just delicious. What do we have on tap for today as far as our ingredients? Okay, we're gonna go with our salmon and with the salmon, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna take a piece off and we're gonna do a piece in the air fryer and we're gonna do a piece in the oven. And then my super greens as I call them, spinach, kale, which is red kale and, excuse me, purple kale and red chard. And then with the spinach, I always put that in just to kind of mix it up. Then we have our sweet baby bell peppers that add color, that add texture, that add taste. Our sweet Japanese sweet potatoes, and that's about it. A little bit of color, a little bit of spices, and our olive oil, and we're ready to go. Okay, moving on. What tools are we going to use today? We're going to use, as I said before, we're going to use the air fryer, and we're going to use the, just a little skillet. Okay, 
And as you see, I've got my air fryer oven here and my skillet. And today we're going to use the oven. Um, I've actually put in a uh, Japanese sweet potato, half of that, so that by the end it comes out and you can see, because last week I made a mash of that sweet potato and it's really, really delicious. So we're gonna do that. So let's get on to cooking. All right, let's talk about our board here, what, we're, what we are preparing today. As I said, we're gonna start off with our red chard. And these are nice, they're like elephant leaves almost. These are huge, okay? Absolutely delicious. And our purple kale, I'm getting one of the smaller ones here. And both of these, I usually um, pull the stem on them and just use the leaves. So it may not be as much, but it's absolutely delicious. And then I've got my baby bell peppers over here that, that we're gonna put in for a little bit of color and a lot of the spinach. See, now the spinach kind of melts down and you'll notice that. Okay, now let's move on to our next vegetable so that we're keeping everything hygienic here. And this is our Japanese sweet potato. These have a white flesh on the inside and I'll show you when we, when we cut these open. Okay, we're gonna cut these open. We're gonna prepare them. We're gonna put a little bit of olive oil in our trifecta of seasoning. And for those of you who've watched me any other day, you can probably recite it yourself. And then we're gonna move those to the air fryer and get those going. Well, let's begin with getting our area clean and then we will start with our salmon. Okay, let me move this over to my other side. Okay. okay, let's start off with our salmon. Look at this delicious piece of salmon. One second here, let me wash. Even though I went from vegetable to meat. Still, we want to make sure that we wash our hands. Okay, moving back to our salmon. This is a delicious, beautiful piece. I'm going to lift this up so you can see it a little bit closer. That is an amazing piece of salmon. Now, one of the things that I do is I get wild caught salmon. I don't like anything with colors added or anything like that. I try to find the best piece that I can really find. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the most of this and I'm going to put this in the oven. I've already got my oven preheated at 385 and we're going to go for about 12 minutes. Um, and then we're going to do the last piece of the air fryer about the last eight minutes so I can compare the two and you can see which one you may want. Okay. So I'm going to take about an inch section. And if those of you who know the inch, it's about this far on your, it's about this far on your finger. So I'll go there roughly measure and we will cut. It is sure nice to have a nice blade when you are moving through salmon and things like that because it can be difficult to get through the skin and navigate through that. Okay, we've got that. All right, I'm going to move this piece onto my board. But first, I use parchment paper. I'm going to use olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. Gonna put that slab down there. Now, I'm gonna wash my hands because now I'm gonna touch my spices. Now, with my salmon, I like to be very simple. Some people, you know, they put lemon, they put this, they put that. I mean, you can put anything you'd like on salmon. I start off with my Old Bay, give it two or three squirts there, shakes. I go back to my black cracked pepper and I'm just simply gonna give it a liberal coat there. And then I go to my Himalayan sea salt and I'm gonna do about two and a half turns. And I like a little bit of garlic on everything because garlic is so good for you. So we're gonna go with a little bit of garlic. And again, I said my oven is heated to 385. I'm gonna go ahead and drop that in and set the oven timer for 12 minutes. And then we'll move our next piece into the air fryer and get started, okay? Set my timer. Okay. Next, we're gonna move this piece on out and we're gonna get back started with our vegetables because we, again, this piece will be the piece that we're going to cook in the air fryer. Okay, now I have 
gone to salmon, so I need to wash my hands. Okay. And also one extra little step that I'm gonna take, I have uh, Lysol wipes and I'm gonna wipe this down just in case. All right, we'll give this a quick wipe. There we go, let's bring back our vegetables. Okay. I'm gonna make this easy. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my skillet. Now, the thing about these is they're very easy to cut. It looks like a daunting task, but it's really not. Move everything to one side of your cutting board and start your space. Okay. So all I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna remove the leaf from the stem. That's all I'm doing, is removing the leaf from the stem. All right, and then after I do that, I'm gonna chop my leaves. Now, before I do anything, I need to put about a half a teaspoon of oil into my skillet so that when it heats up, we will have a little bit to work with there. Okay, there. And I'm simply gonna put these in the skillet. Now, this piece is a little large, but it will cook down. But again, if you get some of the smaller stems in there, it's not really a big deal. Okay, there. There we go. And see, this stem is pretty thick. So again, I'm just simply gonna remove the leaf from the stem. There we go. And back into our skillet. These are going to be delicious. These are, you know, a lot of people don't think that they're worth the time because you have to do all this prepping and it is so worth the time. Number one, the phytonutrients that you're getting from these vegetables is, are huge. Um, again, you know, in today's world, the, one, the number one thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that we're building our immunities. These definitely help you to do that. Fiber off the chart on these also. Okay, there. And as I'm going here, for those of you who are preparing with me, I hope that I'm not going too, too quick. I will give you a chance to catch up uh, once I get everything on the, on the uh, skillet. There we go. And We're gonna throw a little bit of stem in there and that's okay. Again, when I cook, I, I try not to follow all of the rules necessarily, I guess you could say. And I think it, you know, in cooking and everything else, basically, when you cook out of love and you cook out of passion to really wanna do it to help your own self and help other people, it makes it taste so much better. All right, and finally, there, and there we go. So it's pretty stacked, but that's no big deal. All right, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and put this on. Most people will ask, well, what do you put it on? Okay, you're gonna to go to about a four heat and you're gonna let it cook down just a little bit until you hear it start to sparkle. Once it starts to sparkle, you're gonna move it around and just let it almost get to where it's a crisp, okay? Okay, we're gonna move on to our baby bell peppers. Let me clean my bread here. Okay, we're gonna score our baby bell peppers and we're gonna core them. I'm gonna reach over and put these to the sink real quick. And again, a lot of people don't like the seed, so I kind of appease those people. And I cut these in a little bit of a regular pattern because not only are they flavored, but they're colored. And I believe the more color you have, the better meal you're going to have. Okay, I'm gonna move those over to the side. And again, cut that in half, core it. 
Okay. And one more. And we'll do a little bit different chopping pattern here. Again, sometimes you don't want uniformity. All right. Now, next I'm going to move back over real quick. And we're going to make sure that our kale is working. Okay. There we go. We dropped our fire a little bit more so that it, it doesn't get too hot. Okay, the next thing that we're going to work on is our Japanese sweet potatoes. Okay. The lovely thing about these cutting boards is I can stack one on top of the other ones, and when they're fruit or fruit and vegetable and vegetable, it's no big deal. But we'll stick with the one that we have here in case we need that one for and with these, very easy to cut. First of all, I love the skin on them. I think the skin gives them just an excellent taste. So um, we'll go down and half that sweet potato. Then we'll drop it to the side. And then we're simply going to make French fry size slices. And then we'll drop it over one more side. And then we'll cube it. So these things are pretty thick roots. So sometimes you have to give them a little bit of a... a um, Tap with the, the back of your hand. Okay. And then this is what I have next. And then I'll just roll them over to the side and cube them. Some of them you're going to get one and some of them you'll get two. And if you think about it like a French fry, there we go. And we'll drop those in our bag. See, I already have some made up and they're, some are a little thicker, some are a little thinner. All right. Yeah, these are absolutely amazing. I, I found these by accident in Whole Foods um, when I began to not eat meat. Um, I began to kind of search my palate a little bit more and kind of push myself and see what kind of fruits would I and vegetables would I really think about, you know, taking the challenge on eating. Um, as some of you know, I have uh, severe allergies to nuts. So that kind of... Um, limits me in some of the food choices that I make as far as vegetarian or, or any of those types of uh, meals. All right, we'll go ahead and get these in and we'll finish this half. And I think that will be enough to where we can get those started in our air fryer. Okay, now how do we season them? We're gonna go with extra virgin olive oil. We're gonna go one, two, three, four, which is about a, teaspoon and a half almost okay and again here you're going to go up and just a little bit more the next thing that i like to add in is cinnamon uh cinnamon makes these amazing again we're cutting down on the amount of oil and the amount of grease and again you need good oil olive oil is good oil for you so um, of course we don't want to overdo it but you can use that oil Okay, I hear over on the oven, I'm gonna bring those so you can see how much they've gone down just a little bit, but they're starting to dance a little bit. Okay, and as you can see, they're starting to move down a little bit and all I'm gonna do is move them around. Um, I'm gonna season them now as they've started to move, I'm gonna season them. Oh, I wish you could smell, I wish we had smell-o-vision because they're already smelling pretty good. Okay, now I'm gonna drop them on my counter holder here, put a little bit of salt in, some black cracked bell pepper, and get those back on the stove. Okay, now back to my potatoes. Okay, I've seasoned them. I put my, my um, cinnamon. I'm going to put a little bit of salt in. One, maybe two turns. It doesn't take a lot of salt. A little bit more black cracked pepper. Seal my bag almost full to where what I can do is just get all the air out and then massage them. Okay, I have all those lovely flavors moving around. There we go. Okay. 
Okay, now I'm gonna bring my air fryer drawer over. And grab a bowl real quick. First, let's put our fries. Now let me show you a trick with the air fryer. You want to move them to where that they are out of the center. Okay, this is probably a little, well, not really, because we can spread these out. Okay, that's nice and spread out there. Okay, now if you want to dust them with a little bit more cinnamon right now, which sometimes I do, um, now's a perfect time to do it, or you can wait until afterwards. Okay, so on this time, we'll wait till afterwards. Okay, we'll drop these in. And we're going to go at 380, and we will go for nine minutes. There we go. All right, let me get my area straight here. Again, you'll see that I try to use as many colors as as possible. Sometimes I'll use red, sometimes I'll use orange. Um, with the sweet potatoes today, they, they have a, an amazing purple tinge to the skin, so that gives it a little bit of color also. Okay, our salmon is working in the oven. We've got our white sweet potato in the oven. Our greens, our super greens are cooking a little bit. I need to stir those real quick. Let me get those going. Okay, All right, let's take a little look at these again. So just in case you're cooking along with us at home, you can see how these are looking. Okay, they're coming right along. They're good when you see, we didn't put a lot of seasoning in them and they will be delicious. Okay, I'm gonna move these back over. One of the things that I didn't talk about also, whenever you're using an air fryer halfway through, make sure you shake your drawer and get everything moving, okay? Let me move my bell peppers over and clean my board here. All right, I'm gonna look into the chat box. Are there any questions? All right, why do I choose purple sweet? What's the difference between purple sweet potatoes and white sweet potatoes? White potatoes, excuse me. Purple sweet potatoes, their nutrient content is much higher. Um, also, the phytonutrients in the purple sweet potatoes, one of the rules of thumb that I have figured out and started to do a lot of research in nutrition is the brilliant, more brilliant the color of the food is, the better it is for you. For example, your purples and eggplants, your reds, your greens, whatever they may be. The more brilliant in color they are, the usually the better they are for you. All right, let me take a look at my air fryer real quick. Okay, and while we're at it, let's take another quick gander at these. Oh, these are looking amazing. They're not quite ready for spinach yet. Okay, next question is how do I choose salmon? Well, I tell you, one of the things that I really try to do with my salmon is um, I find a local shop if possible. If not, I tend to go to the stores to see you know, whose fish counter is, is the best kept? I mean, when I walk by there, do I look at it and say, wow, that looks great. Um, actually, I have a fish store in Fullerton that I go to, and next time I'll give them a plug because they always give me amazing fish. Actually, I've known this guy since I was at Cal State Fullerton, which was a long time ago. Actually, since like 1983, I've actually known him, and they've been at that place. But getting back to my salmon, I like wild-caught salmon, first of all, because there's no color added. Uh, second of all, uh, it, to me, it just tastes a little bit better. Some people, if you don't know the color of salmon, you think it may be a little weird or it might look like it's uncooked, but it's not. It is delicious. But I usually go with wild caught and then experiment. See which ones you like and which ones you don't like. Okay. Um, again, usually I don't cut my salmon like that. I usually take the piece that they give me and go to work there. But again, we want to compare the, uh, the baked salmon with the air fried salmon. Okay. All right. Next question. Okay, super good. Well, how did I choose the greens that I chose? 
again, I try to eat as best nutrition for myself. So I, in other words, for lack of a better term, best bang for the buck. Red chard, purple kale, and spinach have the highest nutrient content of pretty much anything. And they're amazing as far as fiber and everything else. So that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to eat for health. Okay, let me check with my air fryer again. Okay, I'm gonna give you a quick look at these. Okay, they're not bad, but they're, they're getting there. Okay, that's what they should look at about halfway through. And again with my greens, they're starting to really come to fruition here. Now, I will check to see, let me check on the oven real quick to make sure that we're good. All right. Let's take a look at that. Wow. All right, that is our piece of salmon that just came out of the oven. Now, one of the ways that you check with fish is you look at it. See how my finger bounces? Okay, that's great. If it was mushy, that means that it's raw. My finger bounces off the meat, and you can see how it just goes right off of it. That means my piece is done, and this is ready to go. Okay. Next question was, as I put this back, can we use regular sweet potatoes instead of purple? Definitely. The only thing I would say is make sure that you are getting organic uh, produce. Uh, the reason why we're getting organic produce is because we want to try to limit the amount of chemical uh, interaction that we have with our bodies. Um, one of the reasons why I did, have done that is because I've had health challenges in the past, and so I want to try to eliminate chemicals in my diet as best as possible. Okay. Next question is, if I have hypertension, is Himalayan sea salt okay? I'm not a doctor, first of all, so I don't pretend to, to give you advice on medical advice. However, I do know Himalayan sea salt is much better nutritionally than regular ta table salt. Um, ask your doctor. Just a little bit is not, is not bad. You can actually eliminate the Himalayan sea salt if you want to and use other things like garlic, paprika, um, you know, pepper. I use a lot of uh, jalapenos and things like that instead of the salt in the beginning of my journey, okay? Let me get back over here and I think it's almost time for our spinach. Okay. Now, as you can see, these are cooked down. I'm gonna grab my bowl of spinach. And we're just simply going to dump it right on top. Give it a minute to sweat. And we'll be ready to go. Okay, I've got about three minutes left on my air fryer for this first group of um, sweet potatoes. And then we'll be ready to plate. And I'll throw another one in on the opposite side. Meanwhile, we're about to get, once the air fryer's done, we're about to put in our other piece of salmon, and that'll be four minutes on one side, four minutes on the other side, and we'll be ready to go. Back to the chat box. If you don't have an air fryer, that's quite all right. You can cook everything in the oven. Um, all these recipes don't necessarily, the air fryer just gives us really, really great convenience. And I think the air fryer is, you know, we have a lot of students that are going to school I know some of the people that are interacting with me and say, you know, hey, my son is at school. These are great recipes for him because they don't know how to cook. My son actually said that, you know, hey, when I was a college athlete, I wish I would have had somebody to show me these kind of recipes because I want to eat healthy. I just don't know how to go about doing it. So um, for crispier fries, what the question is, if I want crispier fries, how do I do it? You want to make sure that you leave them in a little bit longer. The other thing that you want to make sure of doing now, I don't use corn. That is one of the things uh, it's uh, genetically modified. But to make these fries like amazingly crispy, I'll tell you the secret, you use cornstarch. You put them in cornstarch, you, you, you adapt this recipe a little bit by soaking them in water first, drying them out. And then once you dry them out on the towel, you put a little bit of cornstarch in there, shake them up, 
put them in here and it makes it just amazingly crispy. Crispiness, I'll give that up because like I said, I gave up the corn. So, um, and again, that's just a personal preference uh, because the genetic, genetically modified corn is so genetically modified, it's within the, the population. So I choose not to eat any corn at all. All right, let me check on my fries real quick. All right, we got about a minute and a half left of those. Those look pretty good. They're about ready to go. And then, as you can see, our spinach has wilted down a little bit. And we're simply going to move it around and allow the heat to do its magic. There we go. Okay. Now, when I get it to where, if you can see right now, it's all fitting in the scale. First, it was a mound. When I get it to right here, what I usually do is I just put it on there and I put it on very low, or I even turn the heat off and just let it work its magic. Okay, so let's drop it back on. I dropped it all the way down to low. Our sweet potato fries will be done in one minute. Okay. And then we're gonna use our large bowl to plate our sweet potato fries. And then we will plate them right after that. Okay. All right, here we go. Ah, one off to the side. All right, let's take a look at these. All right, our greens ready to work here and we'll move those over there we go pick up another plate here there we go and Okay. We'll move those to there. I like to let my greens sit a little bit. Now, meanwhile, we will get our other piece of salmon and we'll drop that in the air fryer. All right. Now, I'm going to simply season it right in here. It's not a problem. We're going to drop it in. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and we're going to plug it right into the air fryer. All right, this one we're going to go for about nine minutes, okay, for this piece. Now, in the meantime, 
I'll start to get my plate together and my presentation ready. Um, we've got a nice big huge chunk of salmon that we're going to put on to another plate and I'll bring that over to you right now. All right, now we're simply going to use parchment paper here and I'm going to get all the way up underneath with my spatula. And simply keep my skin, rotate it, okay, all right, that looks amazing, oh man, I can't wait to taste this. Clean it up just a little bit here. Now on our plate, we're gonna throw some fries, of course. See what I mean about the skins? The skins just make it look just that more yeah. adventurous. Okay. And then we're gonna throw some greens on. But what we're waiting for right now, and I'm going to take a look, is that air fryer salmon also, because we'll plate that with, on the smaller plate over here. Okay. All right, we have about eight minutes left on the air fryer. Somebody also asked, what type of air fryer should they look for? To me, the easier the better, honestly. Um, you know, it took me a little bit to figure out how to work it. And I still look at some of their recipes and, you know, uh, the, the amount of time that they take to me is a little bit longer for my preference. It, it usually tends to almost burn for me. So I really kind of try to watch it. I check it every two minutes or so to make sure that, that it's okay. Next one was mashed sweet potatoes. I love mashed sweet potatoes. Um, I love sweet potatoes, period. But um, actually, the mash part, you know, you can use the golden yams or you can use the white yams. And again, that gives you a different color profile for your plate. All right. Okay, let me take one more look at that. In our oven, we also have our sweet potato. I'm going to take a look at that. I mean, and how do you know? Well, you simply take a fork. If it goes in all the way and pulls out clean, then you're good. So we're going to take our fork and we're going to try that. Nope, we're not quite ready for that. That may take a little bit longer than we expected, but that's quite all right. Um, chat box, we have any other chat box questions? All right, the greens again. Ah, okay. Um, I would say that red chard kind of has a little bit of a bitter taste. Uh, the spinach is more of a sweet taste and the purple kale is kind of right in the middle. Um, and that's why I kind of love the balance of, of those three. Um, Next question, what other vegetables? Okay, I love Brussels sprouts. I love asparagus. You know, do the research on your own. Again, when we're talking about lifestyle changes, in order to really make sure that these changes, changes stick with you and you're able to get to your, either your fitness goals or your health goals, is going to determine what type of food that you eat and the type of food that you put into your body. Um, these are the things that really mix with me very, very well. Again. I'm allergic to nuts, so I don't eat any, any type of nuts. I love sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds, and I get some of my protein for that. Um, I've heard other people say, um, you know, without meat, how are you getting your protein? Plants have plenty enough protein for you. Um, however, my nutritionist tells me I need to drink bone broth because of the collagen um, as a result of all of the weight that I've lost, almost 200 pounds, as a matter of fact. Um, loose skin, well, one of the things is, is I don't really have a lot of loose skin, and I think that is because I've been supplementing my protein with collagen. That gets to be, you know, fairly expensive. 
I'm willing to pay the price because my body just doesn't want beef for some reason. Okay. All right. So let me give you guys a chance to catch up because I see in the chat box, there's a couple people say, hey, wait a minute, slow down a little bit. So they're getting there. Okay. But you other people, keep your questions coming. Um, I had another question from last week about college and high school sports and, you know, how would this equate to their diet? Well, it would depend. If you were an athlete that wanted to gain weight, I would say this definitely works for you, but you're going to have to supplement. And the way that you could supplement would be, for example, I would use uh, Davidica bread and almond butter sandwiches, uh, something like that to eat at the end of your day. I would also use almond butter, hazelnut butter. Um, the peanut, um, excuse me, <coughs> peanuts are um, not quite as good for you as walnuts and almonds and things. And if you have an allergy, you have to do that also. And, and as I'm saying this, I'm gonna wash my hands because I did just cough into my hands. Um, but I like almond butter. Um, I like, uh, and like I said, with Levitica bread, and that's the bread that's got, it's the easiest one. Go into the health food store, look in there and see the bread that's got the most amount of seeds in it. And you'll see it's got 23, 24 seeds or something like that. But anyway, um, the vitamin and mineral content in there, you know, the fuel that we put in, we want to make sure that it's good fuel. So that was how you gain weight. And for those um, who would want to lose weight, what would you do? Well, I would say, for example, I wouldn't eat too many of the sweet potatoes. I only have a few of those. And I would increase my greens. The more fiber you can get into your system, the better you're going to be. And drink your water, folks. The more water you drink, the better. Um, yes, I am basing this off of my skills, but I'm also basing this off of 32 years of coaching wrestling, coaching wrestlers at the highest level of competition, coaching football players at the highest level of competition, and being extremely, extremely successful as far as helping them to navigate the diet and exercise and nutrition and ac academic and athletic performance. Because most people don't realize is your academics, what you eat has a lot to do with how you study, you know, your attention span and all these other things. If you're cramming junk food down your face, um, I'm sorry, but you know, that's when we have the issues with a lot of these young men in class, young men and women, I'm sorry. I, most of my experience comes from uh, teaching at an all boys Catholic school. Uh, one thing I do want to mention is I have a new YouTube channel, Coach Coats for Life. Uh, please go to there. You will see, you know, everything that we've done up to this point, um, how to follow me. Um, let me just, you know, sit my email out there, which is Coach Co Coach, C-O-A-C-H-D-C-O-A-T-E-S for life at gmail.com. Send me an email. I'll make sure you get connected to um, either my, my Facebook account or my Instagram, whichever one. I'm in the process of, you know, fixing the Instagram up a little bit more and we'll get there. But you definitely can contact me at my YouTube channel, Coach Coats for Life. Now, let's take another step back over to the air fryer. Oh, take a look at that. That looks amazing. Now, how do you know if it's done or not? See that bounce? That means it's done. Now, if it was red meat, you'd kind of try to get a little poke on the side and see. But you can see that this will flake away with the fork. There we go. And there we go. Oh my gosh. I've got to definitely try this. Mmm. Delicious. All right. Let's go ahead and plate this. For my trusty dusty spatula. Okay. And we're gonna throw some greens on. And a little bit of orange. And here we go, folks. As you can see side by side, this is our air fryer salmon. Okay, absolutely delicious. Our sweet potato fries. And this is the salmon that we baked in the oven. Almost identical to, I would say that uh, neither one of them, I didn't put oil on the top so they don't have the shape. Okay, and so now 
we have, let me, a taste test. All right, I'm going to try the sweet potato fries first. Mm. Okay. I like my sweet potato fries not necessarily as crispy, but more crunchy. Awesome. Those were really incredible. And now I'm going to take a little taste of the greens. And again, with your greens, you're going to want to mix them up. They're absolutely delicious. Oh, those taste great. Okay, finally, what we're going to do is we're going to taste a little bit of the salmon that came out of the oven. And I'll give you a little look at that from the side and you'll see. All right, that's that. Mmm. It's a nice firm flesh fish. Um, not really salty because again, we didn't put a lot of salt and a lot of stuff on it. Um, now the other one, again, I, I really can't tell the difference. Um, both amazing. Air fryer is much easier. Uh, like I said, when we were speaking earlier, when I talked to people who have students in school, the air fryer is perfect. You can do all of these recipes in an air fryer and get it done. All right, folks. Well, we're going to go ahead and enjoy our meal. We have come to you today bringing you salmon, either in the, from the air fryer and the oven. Our three greens, which I call my super greens, which is kale, red chard, uh, purple kale, red chard, and spinach, and sweet potato fries. Cooking for Life with Coach Coates. Thank you very much for joining us. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye. Bye-bye.